Recall previously when discussing the picohomo homological dimension of subgroups, we have said that if the index of H in every finite quotient of G is prime to P, then the picohomo homological dimension of H is actually going to be equal to the picohomo homological dimension of G. A particular case of this is when H is the pro-P silo subgroup of G. Right, so then we see that the computation of these peak homological dimension could be reduced to computation of that of the pro p groups. Thus, in this video, we're gonna compute the cohomological dimension of pro p group. So let G be a pro p group. We claim that to check that this cohomological dimension is less than or equal to n, we do not need to check this for all i greater than n. We only need to check for n plus 1, and we don't need to look at all continuous torsion A module. We only need to look at z mod pz. So let's see why. Before proceeding, let us recall that if g is a pro p group, then actually for all i greater than 0, these cohomology groups are p primary torsion. So the condition here just become these cohomology groups vanishing. Alright, so let's suppose that we have the n plus 1 cohomology group of G with coefficient in Z mod PZ is equal to 0. Now we want to show that if we replace Z mod PZ with arbitrary continuous torsion G module A, and this n plus 1 with any i greater than n, the cohomology group is still trivial. We'll break the proof down into three parts. The first two parts is about replacing this Z mod PZ with a continuous torsion G module. So our first claim is that for any torsion A module, this cohomology group actually doesn't change if we replace A with the P primary part of A. So what does that mean? This will that means that this will allow us to just assume that A is P primary torsion. And then from here we bring it down to Z mod PZ by looking at a decomposition series of A. Now from that we will get that hn plus 1 of ga is going to be equal to 0. Now we want to prove this. Now we want to be able to replace this n plus 1 with any i greater than n. So what do we do? Well, we use a technique that we have mentioned before. When we compute the cohomological dimension of z, we will use dimension shifting. Sorry, I mean when we compute the cohomological dimension of z hat, not z. Alright, so let us first prove this. Okay, so let's decompose A into its L primary component. And then let's look at these cohomology group with coefficient in this AL. Now observe, first of all, these are going to be P primary. Why is that? Well, because G is a pro P group. So this is just from our remark before. The cohomology group in degree greater than zero of a pro P group are always P primary. But observe that this group is also L primary. Why is that? So this comes from the definition of cohomology. Let's first look at the case when G is finite, and this is just a uh, usual cohomology of finite group. Then a cocycle is going to be of this form, right? Now A is L primary. Then for each of these sigma, the this the value of the cocycle at the sigma belongs to this uh, P primary part, so it must have order a power of L. Sorry, here I'm just writing it multiplicatively. But this has finitely many elements, so there are only finitely many of these powers. Thus, for some big enough M, I must have that A sigma bar L to the M is trivial for all sigma bar. And so that means the cocycle A itself, right, must have the order of power of L. Thus, in the case where G is finite, so this is the usual cohomology, then this group is L primary. But in the general case, the continuous cohomology of a pro-finite group, that's just a direct limit of the finite case. So this group must also be L primary. Now observe then, if L is not equal to P, then this group can be both P primary and L primary, if and only if it's actually trivial. So only this P primary part contribute to the cohomology of A, and so with our loss of generality, we will assume that A is a P primary torsion G module. 
Thus, we have finished step one, and now we're going to prove step two. So, assume that A is a p primary torsion G module. We want to show that the cohomology of G with coefficient in A vanish in degree n plus one. Now, first, we claim that we can assume that A is finitely generated. Why is that? Well, in general, A is always going to be a direct limit of finitely generated. G module and the direct limit compute commute with cohomology, so we have this isomorphism here. Now, if we can show that each of these are zero, the finitely generated case, then that must imply that this cohomology with coefficient a itself must be zero. So, with our loss of generality, we can assume that a is finitely generated. Then a must have a composition series. Where remember here, this b i plus one over b i must be simple G modules. We can then use long exact sequence on cohomology and induction on this m to reduce this to the case when a is actually equal to b i plus one over b i. Now, because this cohomology is just direct limit of cohomology of finite group, with our loss of generality, we can assume that G is finite. So now, this b i plus one over b i is a p power. Right, it's simple, and G is finite. So actually, this will imply this is enough to imply that this must be Z mod P Z, the only finite simple G module of P power is Z mod P Z with trivial action, and we know that H n plus one uh, of G with coefficient Z mod P Z is zero by hypothesis. So we are done. Thus, we are done with step two, and now we need to do step three. By dimension shifting, the argument is exactly like in the case when we compute the cohomological dimension of z hat. So we won't repeat here. But the key idea is we want to look at the long exact sequence of cohomology coming from this short exact sequence. Thus, we have shown that to compute cohomology of pro p group, it suffices to look at dimension n plus one and the coefficient z mod p z.